vestido rendado Um, so, hey everyone, um, today I'm talking with Seth, uh, a prominent writer on The Beautiful Game, uh, an ex-professional football player in Brazil, of all places, um, and we're going to talk about the upcoming World Cup, so uh, welcome Seth, um, thanks for joining me this evening. Um, before I, I start, I mean, we have to talk about that little stint you had in Brazil. Could you just <laughs> maybe give me a quick rejig of it, if you could? Yeah, sure. So when I was um, 18, I just got really fortunate and got spotted by a scout in my local um, football team were out in Brazil and got invited to come back and play in the Copa Sao Paulo, which is um, the like, main youth tournament for all footballers in Brazil. So kind of all, all the main footballers that have played for Brazil played in this. Um, and it was crazy. I mean, we were playing against our first games against Palmeiras. Um, it was live on TV. There was, you know, the crowds were packed. Um, and it sounds just incredible. Like the, like the flair of the players, um, just really amazing to be part of. Um, I got really fortunate in that um, I was one of the worst players in my team because I got hit the team media attention and I got given professional contracts afterwards. So um, I had a season out in Brazil and then uh, unfortunately wasn't able to continue so I came back to England. Okay. But you you, you, um, you brought, it all, brought it all out in a book, uh, The Boy in Brazil, which was very well received. Yeah, definitely. It was, it was amazing to, um, to kind of see the reaction to that. Um, I just, because... We had a lot of time to ourselves, a lot of downtime. Um, I just kept a diary out there, and then when I got back, I thought I might as well write this into a book. Um, it's been amazing to see uh, the response and how people have, have wanted to read um, about my experiences. Mm. So, so in the end, it actually probably worked out that you, you kind of more or less became a, a, a journalist, a sports journalist <laughs> out of it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I've had a couple of books. I, th I think everything always happens for the best is what I learned in Brazil. So, and I see you've, you've a four. You said on your website, I think there's a, you have a book out due out in August, is it? Yeah, so um, I've had three books out so far. One's a coaching book, one's a, I was a ghostwriter on, and uh, I've started to write um, children's fiction. Okay. Uh, so I've got, a, I've got a football book for children coming out in August, hopefully. So we'll see how that does. Yeah. Um, Excellent. <laughs> and did you when, when, did you expect that it would turn out like this when you when you first went to Brazil? Uh, not not at all. I didn't I didn't have a clue what was going to happen. So I just uh, kind of take everything as it comes and then see what happens from there. Okay, brilliant. Um, so um, let's just get on with the World Cup then. Um, so what what is in your opinion are Brazil's chances for this World Cup? Uh, it all for me it all depends really on kind of the circus that company's name are. Um, I think if they can kind of put that, you know, kind of make sure that's not the main focus of their whole tournament, then I can see them doing quite well. I think winning is going to be hard. I think Russia is going to be a real hostile place for them. Um, you know, it's obviously the climate, the climate they're not used to. Um, I think the fans are making it quite hostile. Um, but in terms of the ability of the players and the way that um, they've they've been playing, I, I think they've got a good chance of going very far in the tournament. And I mean, hopefully getting a win but we'll see okay and and do you think the pressure will be definitely be off them this time for this world cup uh not at all i mean in in brazil they always <laughs> think that they're the best uh, they always think that they're going to win and anything other than a win really is incredibly disappointing for them so i'm, I'm sure the pressure will be absolutely ramped up uh, yet again especially after their qualification mm -hmm. and, yeah, they really smash through that so I, I think the expectations are definitely on them to win and what do you think of their group? Um, I mean, I think it's a particularly easy group myself. Switzerland, Costa Rica and Serbia. I mean, that's nine points really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it should be nine points. Um, I don't know if that's almost a curse of having an uh, easier group in, uh, to start off with. I think, you know, getting a couple of hard games uh, under your belt to start off with it can be beneficial as the tournament goes on. So, I mean, we'll see, we'll see how, how good that draw actually is for them. Hmm. And, and what's what's the order that the play? Is it Switzerland first, or I'm not sure, I'm not sure to be honest. I okay. think it I think it might be. Um, 
Switzerland, I, I mean, Switzerland, I can see them having no problems with, really. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm living in Switzerland, and I can tell you they're not, they're not good. <laughs> 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 but what's your score prediction then? Would you like to care for a, give us a score prediction for each game? Uh, we've got to go Brazil to beat Switzerland two 0 Okay. Um, Costa Rica, I'll go three one to Brazil. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Serbia, Serbia might go one all actually. Yeah, that could be the toughest one out of the three for sure. Yeah. Um, so the coach, uh, what's his name? Titi, Titi, Titi. Yeah. Uh, I don't know much about him to be honest. Could, could you give me an insight into who he is and what kind of management style he has? Yes, yeah, so he was um, he was coaching at Corinthians, I think, before before he came the Brazil boss. And I know there's a lot of noise uh, before his appointment saying that they really really wanted him. I think to be a national coach, his team was playing really nice style. Um, it's more because Dunga, Dunga is very pragmatic, um, and Tite is kind of he's got a bit more flair. Um, he's obviously helped by the players; so they've got a lot of really good uh, players performing well at the moment. Mm-hmm. He's kind of reintroduced an element of samba football, which has been perhaps lacking for quite a few years. But he's still got um, kind of pragmatism behind. You know, he's got you know, uh, Casemiro, for example, Paulinho. You know, he's got lots of players who kind of can provide that stability going um, in defence. So there's a good mix of attack and defence. Um, and he's got them playing a nice way. It's just on qualification. Mm-hmm. So I think he's a good man for the job. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, they, they stormed through the qualification, which is was, which was good. Um, so the professional um, squad list was out uh, the other day. Um, is there any maybe players that we might not have heard of that you can maybe tip us for, to, to look out for? Uh, not not really to be honest. Um, kind of all, all the ones that stood out for me um, are kind of quite well known. Uh, the ones, I mean, it's been a good few years since I was in Brazil, so the ones uh, from the domestic game, I'm not not so aware of to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, I'm hoping that it can be a really. There's a lot of interesting kind of battles in the squad. I mean, is it Firmino or Jesus up front? Um, you got how much can Willian and Coutinho kind of come out of Neymar's shadow almost? To, um, you know, hopefully lead Brazil as far as they can go. So yeah, well, you said Firmino and Jesus, uh, they're the two I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, Neymar, he has this injury. I don't know. Is it <laughs> is it more psychological or <laughs> is it a, what kind of injury is it? Will he get over it by the time first round games? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, to be honest, I, I'm I'm strong with Neymar at the moment. It's it's a real shame because he's. His ability, his skills are just phenomenal. But it's just, yeah, the circus that accompanies him wherever he goes. Um, very individualistic. Um, and I think if they, if Neymar uh, feels like he has to carry the team, which he shouldn't need to feel, mm-hmm. then that can be where problems lead to. Maybe there'll be splits in the camp. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Mm-hmm. And Al- uh, Alves, will it, will it be a big loss, I suppose? I think so, but I mean Brazil. Brazil have got so many good attacking fullbacks that it's mm-hmm. uh, he, he will be a loss. But you have got Marcelo down the other side. Um, I really think this is a, a strong Brazil team, um, stronger than one in 2014. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. And the, the build up for the World Cup so far. I mean, have Brazil been playing okay in the friendlies. Uh, players are in form. Yeah, players are in form. Results are good. Um, the feeling's good. Um, Heard that you know, it's a good kind of vibe around with Tite, so yeah, I, th- I think there's a lot of positivity. Um, but then again, it's, it's hard to say really until the players all come together and um, you know actually get to the World Cup. I mean, you know, France had that bust up in the World Cup before when they all kind of started staying together for an extended period of time. So you never really know how a teams going to going to react to that. I guess um, so. It's really important that you have the good team spirit in the camp, which is another reason why I'm kind of a, worried, a bit worried about what happens with Neymar and his, you know, and his real drive to be the best in the world and how it impacts on the team. Yeah. I mean, is, is, could there be um, a division in the camp if he, I mean, is, do other players get a bit jealous? Um, I'm not sure, too sure to be honest. I, I can imagine there could potentially be. Um, though, I mean, you know, Williams used to playing with Hazard, for example. Um, Coutinho is used to playing with Messi now. Mm-hmm. So I guess they are all used to playing with superstars. Um, there's there's just a lot of interesting questions, I guess, which could cause division. I mean, like I say about Firmino and Jesus, I'm sure they're both you know 
I don't see any problems with them, but it's, it's going to be a battle between who plays. Um, in goal, we've got some you know, very, very good goalkeepers. Um, I think Alisson's ahead of Edison at the moment, um, but maybe that could cause a split. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll just see when it comes to the World Cup. And um, so you were in Brazil for about a year and a bit. Um, so what's what's the atmosphere like when the, the national team play? I mean, does everything shut? I guess everything shuts down. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, um, it's a real frenzy. Um, the craziest thing uh, when I was at actually was when I think was it Grêmio uh, won the won the top the top league, and that was absolutely um, really was crazy. I mean, there was just. Traffic was at a standstill. There were people racing around with flags. Every, like absolutely everyone seemed to be celebrating. Um, yeah, but football, football over there is just very different. Um, it really is a way of life, much more so than anywhere any other country I've ever been in. Um, and so, if they if they do well in the World Cup, I can imagine it'd be absolutely absolutely crazy out there. It'd be amazing to be to be over there and experience it. And and is it like did you really always expect it expect to win all the time? I mean. Uh, I've been really like Tito's trying to kind of uh, manage expectations a bit more and um, whilst getting the country excited, you know, saying maybe maybe we're not the most likely to win. But I think, yeah, realistically, all Brazilians expect to win yeah. every, single, every single game they play. I mean, it's 16 years, I think, isn't it? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a, it's a long, long time. Um, it's a long, long time, and I mean, it's going to be some stiff competition. Germany are always good. Uh, you know, France have got a lot of kind of superstars. Um, Argentina you can never discount because of Messi. Mm -hmm. and Spain, of course. So yeah, it's it's going to be really tough for them to to kind of get the win. Um, it's not out. Of, it's not out of question. I might as well ask you about England. <laughs> or, or, or do you have any interest in that at all, or, or is it just? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a, I'm a big England fan. Um, I really like Gareth Southgate. Mm -hmm. I think he's a, he's a really good guy. Um, every time he talks, I think he's, you know, he speaks with real intelligence. Um, and I, I fully trust the team in his hands. Mm -hmm. It's, um, I'm disappointed that Wilshere didn't get called up. I feel that he's probably one of our most naturally talented players and could have been a difference. Uh, but even so, it's quite a promising time for him. We've got some very good young players. I mean, Deli Ali and Raheem Sterling um, really are world-class. As is you know, Harry Kane's one of the best strikers in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, realistically, if we got to the quarterfinals, I'd, I'd be happy. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've got a good group. I think there's a good chance we can win it. Um, but then, yeah, obviously it obviously gets complicated once kind of the more established nations get into the into knockout rounds, especially kind of with this mentality that England have of, you know, really strong to get far in competitions. Mm. It's, but, it's really the first time that England has kind of had that clean break from, um, you know, they're all young players more or less, and it, it's, it does seem like a fresh start this time. Yeah, I, I, just, want, I just want to enjoy watching them play, and I think, I think that will be the case, um, yeah, how exciting the players are. I just want, I just like England to play in a really nice style and, you know, um, Excite the nation, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's always England, you know. You know. <laughs> um, um, let me see. Um, beer, because it, it, I do have beer site. I mean, I can only get Sol. Is there? <laughs> it's, that's probably very boring beer in Brazil. Is that they don't really drink that in Brazil, do they? Or is there anything else to drink out there? Oh, I can't. I can't remember actually. It was so it was uh, quite a while ago, but yeah, it was. Um, was it Kashesha? <laughs> I can only buy salts. That's the only one that I can only buy <laughs> from. I think. Um, so, so generally for the World Cup, then um, who, who do you fancy, and who do you think will be the dark horse of this tournament, and what are you look, what are you looking forward to in, in this year? Um, I fancy Germany to be honest. I just, you know, they're the step classic stereotype. They're just so efficient. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they always. Always dangerous in tournaments. Um, Dark Horse, I, I'd, I'm really interested by Nigeria. Um, hmm. They've got a really tough group. They've got, they've got Argentina, uh, Croatia and Iceland. Mm -hmm. I think they can do well in that group, um, potentially even win it. And I mean, they, they've beaten Argentina recently. They've got some good players. Um, I'd be really interested to see them. I, I think they can go quite far in a tournament. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Uh, I, put, I put them as my dark horse. Okay, that's that's an interesting one. Everybody says Germany. Uh, I've asked a few people in Germany. It comes out all the time. Um, so apart, apart from the World Cup, then I mean, as you said, we're in Brazil. What what is the standard of the Brazilian league? Is it how would it compare to a league in uh, top league in Europe? Uh, it's it's hard to say really. I mean, so I, I wasn't playing in the top league. I was playing in a state league. Um, so how it works is you have the national leagues run from um, for nine months of the year. Then for three months of the year, they have state leagues where, uh, you know, as it says, all, all the teams in the state play against each other. Mm-hmm. So there's, I think there's 800 professional teams in Brazil, but only 100 are in the national leagues. Mm-hmm. So my team was one of the 700 in just the state leagues. Mm-hmm. Um, so the top teams in our state league were in the third, second and third divisions in the national leagues of Brazil. So mm-hmm. not an incredible standard. Um but that being said, I mean we had our club captain had won the UEFA Super Cup with Galatasaray, so mm. we had players who who individually were in, incredible. Um, obviously, he was getting on a bit by that point. It's it's hard to say. I mean, individually, the, the Brazilians that I played with were so gifted, um, so comfortable with the ball. I guess tactically, they were uh, probably not not as uh, far advanced as advanced in Europe. Um, Maybe the stand I played at was similar to, so similar to the fifth fifth tier in England, but it's just yeah. so hard to compare because when you get below the Premier League in England, um, it becomes much more physical, especially down in that you know, third, fourth tiers. Whereas in Brazil, everything was you know, short, short passes, short shot passes, no long ball really, uh, and lots of you know, individual mm-hmm. skill. So it's it's really hard to compare it to a, a European division, I guess, just because of those different styles. And did it take you a long time to adjust to the the, the the setting of the game? Yeah, a long, long time. I mean, I'm a I'm a left back, um, and I was playing non-league football over in England. So all you know, I was told not don't go over the halfway line. <laughs> lots of heading and long balls. Long balls, I, yeah. Yeah, and in Brazil, um, the only training I did as left back was uh, crossing and shooting. I didn't do any defensive training at all, and I wasn't really expected to be in the defensive half. Mm-hmm. And you know, the weather kind of reached 50 degrees at where I was. It was really, even the guys in my team from Sao Paulo found it hot um, where we were. So it was kind of adapting to getting up and down the wing and, you know, really being an attacking threat in such heat was, was a struggle for me. It definitely was. And who, who are the current champions of Brazil at the moment? Uh, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're my Brazilian expert. Come on, man. <laughs> I'll edit that one out. <laughs> okay, I'll ask you to check it and then tell me. <laughs> okay, let, let me check it. <laughs> then you can go... Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Who, who usually wins it? Palermo and uh, Corinthians, isn't it? Or... Oh, yeah, always Corinthians. Um, yeah, Corinthians again. again. Corinthians. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and the Corinthians are the most supported team over there. Um, and that, um, what's the stadium? Oh God, America, America. What's it called, America? Yeah. No, so I never got to go to Rio, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Uh, but, you know, obviously, the top of Sao Paulo we're in um, Sao Paulo, so we were playing in a stadium called Sao Carlos, which is about um, two hours north. And then we just stayed in the. Um, I was in the Mato Grosso League, so we just stayed in that state. Mm-hmm. And then the first time I was there, we were we were playing um, in Vitoria, which is in Salvador. Mm-hmm. So yeah, unfortunately, you didn't get to go to Rio. So hopefully, that will I'll be able to go to Rio at some point in the near future. Um, so I see you, you you have a Twitter. You you're also doing a a project. Um, um, what's it called? Is you're visiting grounds or in strange and unusual places? Oh, so great great football ventures. Mm-hmm. Could you so uh, this is. I was approached by um, a guy called Paul Watson, who had an amazing story of play of uh, coaching football abroad, mm-hmm. and he he's released a really good book. Uh, it's called Up on Pace, one of my favourite books. And um, he he approached me and said, "Would you be interested in doing a book talk together?" Um, so I said, "Yes." We we helped organise it, um, and then we just got a really good reception. So Great Football Adventures uh, seeks to bring together people who've had great experiences of football abroad, uh, whether they be players, coaches or journalists. Um, and so, yeah, we're, we're organising events in London every month um, and looking at ways we can possibly expand it. Mm, excellent, excellent. Yeah, so that's pretty much it, Seth. Uh, uh, thanks for your time. Um, so sure. if, people, if people want to find um, 
find you online and maybe uh, find your books or as you say events or, um, do you have a, a website or are you how can okay, do you have a link or something that yeah. people can so my, my website is just just my name sethburkett.com and uh, my twitter handle is also at sethburkett Okay, so I can I can link that on on my YouTube. So that's pretty much it, anyway. Set, uh, nice and short. Um, so what do you think of the FA Cup today? Who <laughs> it's going to be? I think it's <laughs> just a dull, dull, dull game. Um, <laughs> I, re I really wish these two hadn't got to the final. Yeah. Uh, I I just struggle with Mourinho. Um, <laughs> I think being a boring one all, and then just going to extra time, just having the life sapped out of it. So yeah. I hope I'm wrong. Um, but I must say, I'm, looking, I'm much more looking forward to the Champions League next week rather than the FA Cup today. Yeah, I, I can see you going nil-nil. Oh, man, it's going to be so long, that game. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thanks, Seth. Thanks very much. Awesome. Thanks a lot for your time. Bye -bye. Cheers.